Welcome to the Future is Freelance podcast for solopreneurs, digital nomads, slomads, consultants, remote workers, e-residents, and people living a life without traditional boundaries. We're here for everyone who defies categorization and makes a living and a life their own way. Every other Freelance Friday, we're serving up an audio cocktail of expert tips, inspired insights, and stories from the frontiers of freelancing to help you achieve success with your borderless business, whatever success means to you as you live life on your own terms. Thanks for listening to The Future is Freelance and for being part of the Future of Work revolution. Hello and welcome to episode five, season three of the Future is Freelance podcast. I'm Maya Middlemiss and I'm recording this on the 1st of March 2023 in Valencia, Spain, which is my home. There's fiestas going on outside, so if you hear any noises or banging, the Valencians really like their fireworks, so we're not under attack. Please ignore any background noise that you hear. Now, I wanted to introduce myself properly at the start of this podcast because eagle-eyed or should that be eagle-eared listeners may already have noticed some changes in your podcast. We've had a slight update to the branding, to the introduction, to the music you've just been listening to and so on. Now, change is good, but change always comes with a story. So I wanted to give you the background story before we carry on. This story actually starts almost a year ago when I initiated a conversation with one of my favorite brands, which is Zolo, who are my business portal provider in Estonia. I am a Brit living in Spain and my business is actually a private limited company in Estonia for reasons I hope to unpack in further episodes. But suffice it to say, I had been working with Zolo as a customer of Solo for five years, which five years now, it was four a year ago, and I wanted to talk to them about content creation. And I initially actually wanted to talk to them about writing for them, which I did go on to do, and I'm still doing. So thank you for that, Solo. But it was funny, actually, the initial conversation with their lovely head of copy, I do recall I was just post-COVID, and I don't remember every detail of the conversation, except by the end of it, we decided that we really wanted to make a podcast together. So that is the beautiful serendipity of solopreneurship is that when a client comes up with something you hadn't anticipated, you can decide to up and run with it and have the greatest fun together on the most amazing project that's taken me right through to the beginning of this year, making this podcast on behalf of Solo in Tallinn. Now, Zolo have decided that their content priorities are moving on elsewhere, but the podcast is keeping going because this is where I find myself. And honestly, if you'd asked me a year ago, do you want to start a podcast independently? I probably would have been a little bit hesitant, but this is a year later and I find myself the host of a podcast which has a mission. It has an audience. It has some lovely reviews already. Thank you, everybody who's taken the time to support me on this journey. And I really want to live the spirit of the future is freelance and the spirit of independent entrepreneurship and carry on with the future is freelance. So I really hope that you will come with me as I take this show forward independently. And before we move on, I want to say a special thank you to a few people particularly Ross at Podcast Polishing, who used to make the podcast sound so amazing when I was producing it on behalf of Solo. I have had to learn very fast this week to do a lot more of that side of things myself. So particular tribute to Ross and who knows, maybe we'll be working together again soon because I have great appreciation for what you do and how polished you made everything sound before. And of course, my extreme gratitude to Zolo. It's interesting, this is the first episode that they're not actually more than sponsoring, but it's the one that I feel I need to show my greatest gratitude for the adventure that we've been on together and for initiating the future of freelance in the first place. For actually having the courage and the sincerity to hire a freelancer to be the voice of their brand 
for so many episodes, I think shows that they really do walk the talk when it comes to supporting entrepreneurship. And I will pop a link to Zolo in the show notes for anybody who wants to check them out a little bit more. And I'd be very happy to talk to anybody who's interested, either as a freelancer or if you want to step things up a notch and open a private limited company using Estonian e-residency from pretty much anywhere in the world, Zolo is the place to be. And they're a fantastic team to work with as well. So moving forward, what will the future of freelance involve? Well, hopefully more of the same, the great guests and stories that you've come to enjoy and given us such great feedback about. And it sort of chunks out into a number of themes, which I wanted to explore a little bit more fully here. But the first thing to say is don't worry, nothing very much is going to change. So please stick with us and enjoy the ride. I'm going to be focusing a lot this year on the important developments happening around the whole idea of business without borders. I think we're at a really exciting, pivotal stage as the world is unlocking and changing and people are demanding new levels of flexibility, both in employment and self-employment and in the ways that we interact with the people who pay us to do stuff. You know, it used to be a spectrum of you were a freelancer or you were on the employee track and there was nothing in between. Whereas now we're seeing so many different ways that people can make deals to get stuff done. And we have tools at our fingertips that we just didn't have a few years ago. E-residency in Estonia has now reached 100,000 members. So shout out to e-residency. That's an incredible thing you've accomplished. There are e-residency schemes arising in other parts of the world too that I want to explore. Um, We have digital nomad visas. I mean, this is really just the last 12 to 18 months that these things have started to emerge, a recognition that people do need and want to live and work anywhere. And when they do so, it's actually positively advantageous to the places that they visit. And therefore, it makes sense for countries to make these offerings to entice people and give them permission to come and live, not as a tourist, but as somebody actually earning a living, bringing income into the country, not taking jobs away from the people who live there. So that's a really exciting space to see unfolding. We had a fantastic episode last year with Lily Zabo, which I strongly urge you to check out because she's doing some amazing work, just trying to keep up with this space. I know she's working on a white paper right now. So shout out to Lily and the work you're doing to try and keep the world informed about this really exciting emergent trend of digital nomad visas. We even have new forms of business like decentralized autonomous organizations, which create new ways to collaborate as teams and get things done. And as always, the regulation is slow to catch up with the reality. It's probably the very last thing that changes when you get behind the social changes and the technological changes that people are demanding from their work. But things are starting to shift. And there are projects who are really transcending the boundaries and pushing at what can be done, upending traditions. And those are the people I want to be talking to in this podcast because they are creating the future. So you know who you are. Some of you, I'm coming after you anyway, and I really want to get you on this show. But if you hear about a project that's doing something really unique and revolutionary to help facilitate doing business without borders and really getting rid of those regulatory boundaries or going around them in you know legal compliant ways, obviously, um, then I'd like to hear about it and share that story with the world. So along with that, we have the idea of working in teams, which might sound a little bit strange when we talk about freelancing because it's obviously something that you do on your own. But we need teams. I mean, we need to collaborate with each other. We need to work together. And what these new paradigms for borderless business are doing is unlocking those ways to collaborate, not just with people who you might live near or share a physical space with, but people anywhere in the world, any time in the world. We're starting to see more and better practice emerging about asynchronous working, about working out loud, visible teamwork. This is incredibly exciting to me because I've been working remotely for 23 years now. There's a story behind that as well, which we won't go into now. But I've seen that practice 
emerge and become normalized and new things develop, new things tried out. And in the context of a continually changing technology as well. I mean, I won't even talk about the technology for doing this 23 years ago, but let's just say it's much easier to work in a way which is visible and accountable to your colleagues who you're working with, wherever they are, and even if you're in different time zones and different continents. So exploring remote work best practices and evolving knowledge is something I really want to dig into as well. And the way that organizations are using blended teams of freelancers, solopreneurs, contractors, part-timers, full-timers, it truly is a spectrum now, not a dichotomy. And that's very exciting for all of us, I think. So I want to look also at the practical solutions to creating this kind of lifestyle choice business and lifestyle that we've chosen for ourselves. Because I think it, it's very easy for a show with a theme like The Future is Freelance to end up really strategic, really high level, looking at these big regulatory changes and cutting edge projects. But that doesn't necessarily answer the question that people might have of that's all very well, but how do I transition from my location-based job or or even freelance role to the kind of lifestyle that I might want to have. So I think it's really important that I continue to talk to people who are actually doing it. And we've got some fantastic examples in last year's episodes for people who have really carved out a business where there wasn't one to start with, people who found a unique niche, people who found a way to bring something to the world, to meet a need that they saw was there. And that there wasn't a job available for, so they created their own. And these stories are always extremely inspiring. They can spark new ideas for you. They can give you information about whole industries that you didn't really know existed or were able to offer in this way. And I think we're going to find some great people to talk to. I've got a number of them already lined up to bring to you in upcoming episodes. So hold this space because there's even more to come. I think. It's also important to look at the, the frameworks that we've got out there. And one of the things we did last episode was talk to people who are making great use of the tools that exist, like people who are finding success on freelancing platforms like Upwork, people who have mastered new niches in social media to make something happen using the tools that are there available to anybody. So this is going to be important when it comes to the practicalities. And because I'm a bit of a nerd anyway... That is going to bring us into the tech as well, the technology which helps us to do this collaborating, to connect with the people who need to hear our message, to communicate with colleagues wherever we are. Honestly, in the time that I've been doing this way of working, the transformation in this space has been so incredible. It's Sometimes it's important to just reflect on how fortunate we are. I know that this has been said a lot about COVID, that or what if it had happened 10 years previously or so on, then we'd, we'd have solved these problems in a different way. But we really are incredibly fortunate now that we have access to the tools which have been developed to help us work in this way. We have access to technology and devices which are reasonably affordable and accessible. They're portable, so you can go and work anywhere. We have bandwidth, you know, we have accessible high speed internet, which lets us share data in many parts of the world. You can do that really without thinking about what it costs to share that data, though there are, of course, costs which we must consider. So there are so many practical things which we can explore, which can help us do things better, do things more efficiently, do things in a more fun way sometimes and really remove the friction of creating the lifestyle that we want. So I want to hear from people who are doing this, who are building it, people who are doing something unique in their own freelance life or who are creating tools that unlock possibilities for other people. Perhaps that's you. Perhaps you know somebody. Please get in touch with me. Um, the best call to action is social media. If you can find Maya Middle Miss, that's me on Twitter and LinkedIn are the main tools. Please don't email me. I hate email try and find me on social instead and let's start a conversation because I really want to highlight more solopreneur success stories here that we can all be inspired by. I find them incredibly inspiring myself. So look out for people who've done something different, people who've maybe put together two normal things and 
carved out something that wasn't there to start with. I know that James Altucher calls this idea sex. You bring together two concepts that have never been combined before and you come up with something incredibly unique. So that's the theme of practical solutions and solopreneur success stories. Let's zoom out again and look a little bit more broadly now. I really want to continue exploring themes of global citizenship and community and responsibility. We've had some fantastic conversations already on The Future is Freelance with people who are doing inspiring work in this area. Do check out the interviews with Tarek Kalusi, Dean Kuchel, Gonzalo Hall, All of these people are building communities which are without boundaries and they're bringing together the people who are living in a location independent way, but actually connecting those people and their activities back with the places that they live and the places that they visit. And this is so important. We are incredibly privileged, actually, if we can pick up a laptop and go and live and work wherever we are. And You know, whether that privilege comes from the education and skills that we've developed, whether it comes from being born somewhere where you could access a passport, which unlocks more of the world than other people. There are so many random factors in here, some of which you can overcome, some of which you simply can't. And it's really important to recognize how lucky we are. And if you feel lucky, then you need to be giving back. And there are ways and means to do that. You are part of something bigger. You're part of a movement. And when you connect with the communities that these people are creating, then you get so much out of it as well. Not only do you find new ways to travel and live that are sustainable and slow and rewarding, you build your own community and network and you take that with you wherever you go. And I think this is particularly important at the moment. The world is going through some economic challenges and people look around for someone to blame for that, frankly. And there has been a backlash against digital nomadism in general, against remote work, against people who are seen as moving into an area and changing it. Now, I think it's incredibly unfair that the digital nomads take the rap for this. We didn't invent gentrification. We didn't invent double digit inflation. We certainly didn't invent moving around. But This is a visible change in the world. So there has been a backlash. It's inevitable. What we can do as individuals is try to make sure that we're intentional and sustainable about the ways that we choose to travel and live, that we integrate with communities that we go to, whether we're expats, immigrants, nomads. We are part of a broader context. We're not just rocking up with our laptop, uh, pushing up prices and interacting with international brands only and not learning languages or talking to local people. This has to change. And this is part of the freelance future where we all have choices and we're all part of a broader community. For me, this year is also going to be about putting down more roots and strengthening the remote work Spain community, which is a community which started on Facebook. It's transitioning into a website and mailing list and practical products because just as I said about the podcast itself, you have to start from where you are. And for me, that's Spain. I've been here over a decade, actually. I've been here since the last financial crisis. You know, you can measure your life in these things, in these economic cycles, heaven help us. But when things all went wrong before, over a decade ago, I was working remotely and so was my other half, but we were basically employees and we saw the devastation going on around us in the communities we lived. We saw people losing their businesses, sometimes losing their homes and having to make dramatic lifestyle changes, but we couldn't really do anything. You know, the way we worked was so unusual. It was so inaccessible. There really weren't the opportunities to offer at scale, even the practical things like trying to find reliable broadband for two people to be on a video call at once was, it's quite unthinkable now. Fast forward to today and we're seeing economic challenges again. We're seeing inflation. We're seeing a downturn post COVID. Uh, But now there are choices. Now we can actually do something to help spread the word about working in a remote way, about freelancing, about working for people who aren't in your immediate community and This is why I started the Remote Work Spain community. I will put links in the show notes again if this is applicable to you. You're welcome to join us even if you're not in Spain because 
a lot of the content that we're sharing and the opportunities and jobs is relevant for anybody anywhere who wants to choose where they live and not necessarily choose to work in and dependent on that local location and economy. The other thing that we've been talking about a lot in remote work Spain is the excitement of the new digital nomad visa. And we know that Spain is lagging behind in other parts of the world have had these visas in operation in in some cases for over a year now. I know that Barbados and, and others are actually way out ahead and have proved that this works. Digital nomad visas are a fantastic way of bringing income from other parts of the world into a local community. And we're seeing communities and cities and towns and villages changing so much. This is partly a COVID thing. It's partly a remote work thing. It's partly a future of work thing. And we can all be part of it and being intentional about it, finding homes and lifestyles that we choose. Once we've got the work and the income in place, it unlocks so much. So Whilst this podcast will continue to address international issues and not be focused wholly on Spain, I do want to bring you some great stories and examples, which for me are a little bit closer to home because I don't describe myself as a digital nomad. I, I live in Spain by choice. I have a home here. I love to travel. I love to visit other communities and see what's going on and, and find these stories and examples and events happening in the digital nomad community, but then I love to come home afterwards. And I like unpacking these issues and looking at the bigger pictures. That includes terminology, actually, because the whole digital nomad concept is problematic in some ways. I think the the term of nomad has a lot of tribal connotations and it might be seen as appropriating by some. It's also a group that's seen huge demographic changes. We're not talking about young graphic designers with MacBooks drifting through the world, drop shipping things. We're talking about families. We're talking about lifestyle changes. We're talking about part-time nomads who have a base, but then travel during school holidays, for example. There are so many different ways of doing this lifestyle. So maybe between us, we can come up with some better names, with some better ways of describing who we are and what we do. I'd also love to describe what I do better as well, because I travel from a home base. But when I go to an event, a conference or something like that, I always add on time, either before or after or both, if it's somewhere nice that I haven't been to before. And I saw this described as blending work and leisure with the dreadful word pleasure recently. So I thought, hang on a minute, I'm a writer. I, we have to do better than this. So please Give me another word for traveling consciously and making the most of seeing the world when it's also part of your business lifestyle that you've created for yourself, because surely we can do better than words like pleasure. So these are the important issues that the future of freelance will be tackling in 2023. And of course, I'll still be writing and speaking and consulting this podcast. I want to be part of that one to many high leverage communication that I want to focus on. I want to do more of that than sort of training and coaching and closed events. Although sometimes when you do something like in-house with, with a business, it does make big changes in the wider world. So I'm certainly not, not ruling anything out and I'm open to anything. But there we go. That's how I see the future is freelance. And I'm if you're still listening now, then I really appreciate you still being on this journey with me. If you support me and what I'm doing, then I'd love you to share and rate this show. It really is a, a case of growth by stealth with podcasting. It's word of mouth. My words in your ears is one part of it. But then if you find this content valuable and you can help connect me with that global community and spread the word, not just to people who are already living this life, but people who deserve all that it can offer people who might be able to learn and be inspired by the guests that we have, people who might have ideas of their own to, to bring and share. I want to bring in new voices. It's wonderful to hear from, you know, we've had some incredible guests who are very accomplished speakers and community leaders in their own right. But I want to balance that also by giving a voice to people who've never taken part in a podcast before, people who might be, even be nervous or anxious about it. Please, I, I hope that others will confirm I'm very easygoing, very friendly. There's no right or wrong way to do this. If you feel you've got a story to tell, something interesting to share with the freelance community, 
then please just hit me up and we can start a conversation about it. You're not committed to anything at all. And it will enable me to keep reaching out and connecting with new people, finding these amazing stories to inspire in turn and guests to bring back to you all whilst I'm continuing to develop my own writing and speaking in this really important and exciting space. So that's what it is. It's all about community. Please share your feedback. Please share your ideas, your comments, help amplify and grow our message. You can connect with me anywhere that you find the name Maya Middlemiss. It's quite weird to have a unique name on the internet, but I'm pretty sure I still do. If you spot another one, let me know. But you can find me on on Twitter, on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook, particularly at the Remote Work Spain community. And I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your feedback about how we can make the future of freelance part of your future. Look forward to being in touch with more episodes soon. I'm going to try and keep a fortnightly cadence going so we can talk about fortnightly freelance Fridays. That's a bit of a mouthful as a hashtag, but that's how to listen out for it because I I can't do this weekly at the moment, not until I find some amazing sponsors to help me build and grow the show anyway. So I'll just leave that out there in the universe in case that that amazing sponsor is listening. But in the meanwhile, I want to keep exploring. I want to keep creating content that you want to listen to. And I appreciate you being here along this journey. Thank you for listening to the Future is Freelance podcast. We appreciate your time and attention in a busy world and your busy life. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a fellow freelancer and help us grow this movement of independent entrepreneurs. If you rate and review The Future is Freelance in whatever app you're listening in right now, it helps spread the word and helps us reach more people who need to hear this message. Together, we can change the world and make sure the future is freelance. This is Maya Middlemiss wishing you happiness and success until our next episode.